There was a young woman, a patient of mine. She was an intelligent woman. She viewed the world through a hard rationalist lens. Her intellect, her rationalism, was something that got in the way, something she hid behind. It was an unsurmountable barrier. It precluded her from seeing the larger picture, the breadth of our human condition. During one of our sessions, she told me about a dream of hers, a dream about a golden scarab. Yes, then he approached me and gave me a piece of jewellery. It looked very expensive. It was a golden scarab beetle. At that moment, I heard something tapping on the window behind me. There was a large flying insect knocking up against the glass. I went to the window, opened it and caught the insect. It was a beetle, not unlike the golden scarab she had described. I gave it to her and said, here is your scarab. One of the main experiences that Carl Jung has that kickstarts him off in thinking about causality and coincidence is this episode with the young woman and the scarab, which he writes about in his essay On Synchronicity, which is in his collective works. The outcome for the young woman is that it puts a hole in her hard rationalism. It breaks the ice of her intellectual resistance, which allows Jung to continue her treatment unimpeded. We can all probably recall from our own experiences examples of meaningful coincidences, accidental happenings which carry with them some meaning for us, which makes dismissing them as mere coincidence unsatisfactory. Events that stop us in our tracks. Some examples might be you've brought someone to mind that you haven't seen or thought about in years and then suddenly you just bump into them there on the street. Or you may have had a dream of a prophetic nature, which then plays out in reality. Or perhaps you've been asking yourself a question in your mind for some time, and in some inexplicable way, the universe seems to offer you an answer. Or you may have taken note of the time in a seemingly random moment, just as the clock hits 11.11. In attempting to explain and come to terms with phenomena of this nature, Carl Jung coined and developed this word, this theory, synchronicity. Jung defines synchronicity as an occurrence of events which appear significantly related but have no discernible causal connection or are a-causal. Jung is at pains to stress that he is not, however, denying the existence of chance. Things do just happen by chance. Even very unlikely things do happen. He gives an example of this in his synchronicity paper concerning fish. He had a series of fish-related encounters, all in close succession. He saw an inscription of a fish in a book he was reading. He was served fish for lunch. A former patient showed him some pictures of fish. He had a dream concerning a big fish the night before, and so on, all of which in combination makes for something strange and unlikely, very unlikely even, but not vanishingly improbable enough that it qualified for Jung as being a synchronicity. To qualify, it must be exceedingly improbable, beyond chance, be a causal, and there must be a paralleling of meaning. In thinking about synchronicity then, we are necessarily talking about causation or the lack of it. And this is important if we're really going to get a grip on what synchronicity is. Causality is, of course, to do with cause and effect, a cause in time and space which brings about a particular effect. I may drop a book in space-time, for example, and about a second later it'll hit the ground with a thud. With synchronicity, there is a relativization of space and time. 
meaning that our psyches seem to be able to have a bearing outside of space and time, which is to say our psyches are not ultimately bound by space and time. You may have had a dream, for example, which predicts the future, which amounts to you having a dream in which you remember, if you like, a future event or an impression of a future event, even though it hasn't happened yet. You're able to recall an event in this way because your psyche in your dream state has stepped out from the linearity of time, thus giving you information which defies the normal way causal connections work. A lot of people misunderstand synchronicity to be merely the giving of meaning subjectively to improbable events, and that is a misunderstanding. It is much more than that. The theory of synchronicity has a number of implications, which amounts to nothing less than an entirely different way of understanding the structure and nature of reality, which challenges mainstream Western science. It entails a deep connection then between psychic events and physical events. What is happening to us in our thought world beyond space-time is bound up with what is happening in the material world. This then takes us into the realm of metaphysics, that substrata of reality which is beyond the material. And invoking such, it implies a meaning and a purpose to the universe, beyond such purpose that we may find within the course of human experience. It points us towards the numinous. Jung talks about this metaphysical, beyond the material meaning in terms of objective meaning or transcendental meaning, all of which is a byproduct of this theory of synchronicity. All this then is contrary to, critical of, empirical science as it is understood and practiced today in the West. But Jung also understood his theory of synchronicity to offer a counter-narrative or a critique of religion, particularly the rationality of religion. And this may sound surprising to you because you may not think of religion as being particularly rational. And that's because we're talking about a different conception of rationality. If you take Christianity, for instance, the rationality at play there relates to the beliefs and practices derived by way of either extrapolating out particular understandings of the biblical narrative or by extrapolating out particular ways of interpreting and understanding the creeds or the ecclesial patriarchs or just generally what has been received by way of tradition. Either way, there is a system of rationality at play which prohibits any genuine engagement with experience. Even when lip service is played to the value of experience, and it often is, it is always very tightly bounded. Synchronicity then is an engagement with the numinous, the spiritual, which entails a great deal of openness, a genuine openness to the uncanny, to the paranormal, to the esoteric, as all that plays out in our lives, informing in turn our own worldview. And that dimension of life is often, of course, viewed with some suspicion by religion. Finally then, it should be noted that the theory of synchronicity for Jung acts almost like a unifying principle. It's what draws together Jung's theories in general. So if, for example, we take most pertinently his concept of the collective unconscious and archetypes, the theory of synchronicity plays in with, parallels with, these theories closely. So what is synchronicity then? It's a meaningful a-causal relationship. It's a relationship which is playing out at that subterranean psychic level, wherein there are archetypes which are finding expression in psychic and physical content. Hence the paralleling that you find in the theory of synchronicity, often accompanied by, for us, a sense of the numinous. Numinosity is a characteristic of the archetype. Thanks for watching. If you haven't done so, then please do like and subscribe, and do check out the description below where I've linked a related video.